Hey guys, it's Penelope in London and the world seems so full of chaos. It's incredible what's going on. Um, do subscribe, I'm going to say that. Um, I'm building my channel and sharing information out there. But what I'm seeing, you know, there's a lot of energy around at the moment. And when we look at this current chart, I'll just get my marker here. And, you know, we're all feeling, the astrology is what we're feeling. And what we feel, then we act on that or well you know, see something happen or something will happen and we feel. So it's very feeling based. And Simon Forster pointed out to me who mentored me and met, was a mentor to me and also looked at my astrology chart with me for a few years, evolutionary astrology. We looked at my chart and we began to decondition myself and then we began to heal the early imprints. And this is what astrology is meant to be used for. It's not so much about predicting events it's basically getting to a point where we become whole and becoming whole is that we have the devil and god inside of us i mean not literally but metaphorically you know not denying our shadow side the shadow can also be you know a positive thing in the fact that we may have been um sent off on a on a path that was not ours and we need to go back and reclaim something from our childhood maybe it's our creativity or something that was said about us that's shadow-like, that means that we find it hard to self-actualize. So today, when we look at the current um, configuration going on today, we've got Venus currently um, and in the sign of Capricorn. So in the sign of Capricorn, we have Venus, we have Pluto, and we have the Sun currently for a few more days, four more days, it's going to be there. And then it will move into Aquarius. We've got Saturn, Jupiter, and Mercury in the sign of Aquarius. Now, at the end of the month, Mercury is going to go retrograde, and it's going to go back to, I believe, 11 degrees. Um, I haven't got it written down in front of me, but it's going to go backwards. So we're going over something because it will go back retrograde for three weeks. So we will review, rewind, and release. That's the whole point of retrogrades. They're nev never anything to be afraid of. Um, it's perfect how astrology works out. Currently, the moon is eight degrees of um, Pisces, and also we've got Neptune there. We've got Chiron in Aries, which is there for the coming years. And this is where we get to heal our selves. It's to do with healing self. It's almost like you're on an aeroplane and the plane's going to go down. I don't want to scare you, but I'm giving you an example. And you would, you know, you've got to have that mask yourself, the air, before you can save other people. You know, so this is what in Aries, Chiron in Aries is really about us healing ourselves. Then we have Mars which a few days ago entered the sign of Taurus and it's also four degrees and it's going to be conjuncting um, on the 20th. It's already in a conjunction, but it's going to be dead on a conjunction um, on the 20th. Um, it will be at six degrees. And also we've got Lilith, which is the shadow. So Mars, Uranus, huge energy. And then we've got the node in Gemini, 18 degrees, um, and it's moving this way around the chart. The nodes take 18, 19 years to move around the chart. And I won't go into all of the movement of the planets, but if we look at the moment, we've got the sun conjunct Saturn, the sun is conjunct Pluto, the moon right now is, you know, sextile to Venus, sextile to Mars and sextile to Uranus. So the, but the moon moves rather quickly. And um, Mercury is square to Uranus. Venus is trying in Mars and Venus is trying in Uranus. So Venus up here is giving us a bit of a helping hand because it's trying in here. And also it is trying in, it's in an exact trine to Lilith, the shadow. So our inner needs. And also we've got Mars square to Saturn. So we can see that Mars is square to Saturn. So this is a lot of restriction going on at the moment. We want to go forward, but we're being restricted because Saturn is applying to Mars. Then we've got Mars conjunct Uranus. We can see this here, I've just said. And Jupiter is conjunct Saturn. So this is a really heavy chart. Um, Saturn is square to Uranus as well. And the nodes are squaring to the moon right now. So the nodes are, you know, squaring, you know, it's got, that square is going in because it's applying. 
And as we move through, we've got, you know, the Lilith stuff and the, the Chiron is square to Venus at the moment. So that wounding, the Chiron here, square to Venus, there's that wounding that we um, have at the moment in our needs being met and then having to look inward to ourselves and resolve whatever needs to be resolved because there are no saviors ultimately we can see this um greatly with the pandemic that's going on that nobody really knows what's going on like people can say yes they do and we just don't know and that is the reality and then we've got um the nodes are in an exact square to our neptune here which you can't see on the chart this chart what i'm going to do is move over to my solar fire give a new share and this is the emanated chart so that you can see here um the nodes um you've got this node going on that is square to um neptune and then we've got also the what else is going on here we've got an inconjunct we won't mention that um we've got this stuff going on so let's look at what the sun in the conjunction to Pluto, the sun is our vitality and Pluto is the planet of transformation, birth, death, transformation. So with the sun conjunct Pluto, there is a light shining on renewal at the moment and healing. It's a potent time and can be filled with power struggles or personal empowerment, depending on how we choose to channel this energy. So we really want to look at how we're channeling our own energy. It's very difficult because when we look outside, we can see things and we can assume that things are happening to us like we can watch what's going on in the world and we can feel it so deeply and depending on our chart as well I mean I have Neptune um conjunct my south node in the 12th house so I literally feel whatever I see I tend to feel so I've got to really watch what I'm allowing into my space um, and psyche because I get very affected by it then the Mars conjunct Uranus, um, which you can see here, the Mars conjunct Uranus is an energy of drive. So Mars is our drive and Uranus is revolution. And Mars conjunct Uranus, there's this feeling of excitement in the air because it's Uranus Aquarius, um, also is the ruler of Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius. Um, but also it's a time to guard against being careless. You know, we wanna make sure that we're not being careless and because we can have, you know, sudden reactions, actions, and accidents or outbursts, you know, like an outburst of energy. So it's a visionary um, passion can be strong, but there's also potentials here for breakthroughs. Um, when we, but we've got to direct our forces. We can't just be all over the place, but Uranus can, you know, and Mars is very powerful. And um, the other thing, um, Venus trying to Uranus is a nice one to look at. So because Venus is to do with our inner needs and beauty and also money, it's inwardly. And Uranus is again the revolution. And with Venus trining that, you know, to our um, Uranus, it's where we can feel excitement and, you know, our nature of expression. Um, but we can have, you know, we can sort of feel that we don't want to stick to routine that that's not really enjoyable because we want some excitement so our needs and it's about you know feeling about the urge for wanting liberation so the more we look at astrology we can see how that's playing out in our own chart if i pulled up my own chart and this was transposed onto my chart all of these planets are going to fall into particular houses so i can tell you that up here for me this is happening in my second house. All of these planets for me are in my second house. And we can then begin to look at, integrate it and look at what's going on. And then these planets will be in aspect to our natal planets. So it's really deep work, but it's a way to evolve. Um, Jupiter conjunct Saturn is where we have the, you know, Jupiter is about expansion and Saturn is about restriction and structure. So with Jupiter conjunct Saturn, it's a delicate balance and there's a potential for us to create a solid framework um, that can be, too, you know, it can be overly optimistic or too lofty. So we want to make sure that we're, you know, being, you know, we're not moving too fast. We want to sort of slow down a bit. And the sun is also conjuncting Jupiter. It's going to go into, you know, not now, but it will be coming up. It's applying. 
And that's about expansion and good fortune, depending on how we look at it and how it's used. And there's a light shining on some opportunity with that aspect there. So, you know, as things move through, let's go forward to the 20th and I'll just show you the chart of the inauguration. So this is the 16th of January. This is the 17th. You can see here Mars moving on in. This is the 18th and this is the 19th. And then we have, that's the 19th actually, it's conjunct. And then if we go to the 20th, this is the chart of the 20th. And there's a lot out there on YouTube and people's ideas about what this chart is representative of. But I think when we're looking outside in the world right now, we can really see this chart playing out in reality, particularly when Mars entered Taurus and left and when it moved out of um, Aries because it was there for months, it was there for many, many months and because it went retrograde. So, our, you know, we had a change in direction and we saw the thing at Capitol Hill as an example. I mean, I'm not into politics, but I'm just, you know, I look outside me and I see what's going on and I see it's playing out in the chart. So this day is, um, you know, we've got the sun on the 20th. The sun has just entered Aquarius. It's conjunct to Saturn. It's conjunct to Jupiter. It's, you know, and then it will be moving in onto Mercury. Then we've got um, also the, the squares going on with Pluto, all to Mars, Uranus and Lilith. And also we've got the sun, sorry, the moon would have crossed over um Eris, which takes 560 years to move around the chart. And then the moon throughout the hours is going to move over these planets on that day. So let's just do this by hours. So the 20th of January, 2021. And what we're looking at is the moon in Aries. And then it's going to leave Aries. And then it's going to move into Taurus. And this is um, the evening of the 20th in the UK. So this will be, this is about, if we look here, this is in the UK, this is 19.46 p.m. So that would be 11.46 a.m. in California and 11, 12, 1, 2, and then it will be the afternoon in New York as an example. So if we go ahead again, um, and we've got this, is definitely gonna move over so we can see what's going on there. The moon moves over um, on, you know, the 21st as well. Anyway, I'll catch you later. Hope this is useful and, you know, look after yourself, look after your diet, look after your well-being, your mental health and reach out to people that, you know, care for you as well. It's like stay, stay close to people that are on the same page as you because we need each other right now. Catch you later.